A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Fellow mathematicians, we come back to our video. Only two days left until the start of the Advent Calendar 2023. And what better way to get yourself into the Christmas mathematics mood than by getting yourself some of the Christmas merch that is once again available over at my Teespring shop. I got more than just one version available, so definitely make sure to check it out and it will arrive before Christmas. But before we get to the Advent Calendar, calendar, whatever you want to call it, a final problem at the end of November. It's not hard at all, but it's a fun little problem involving the use of radiance. Give it a shot. It's a lot of fun. I found this on X Twitter. Twitter has a wide community of mathematical puzzle makers. And this was one that got recommended to me and it was fun. So I might as well show it here on this channel. Maybe you also get a kick out of it. Things don't need to be hard for them to be fun. Very easy task. We have this orange line given and we need to find the length of this orange line. Here's a better sketch because my sketch sucks. It literally sucks dick, especially the circle up here. And what you might notice is that we know the diameter of this bigger circle, six centimeters, and the radius of the smaller circle, two centimeters. Give it a shot and let me know down in the comments what you got. And now we're going to dab right in. First thing, we need to find the whole length of this construction here, this orange thick boy. So what is this total length comprised of? Well, obviously of the radius and the diameter here, which overall corresponds to eight centimeters. I'm going to leave the units out for now. Plus, then we have this part of the arc. This circle has eight equal parts in it. And this part spans an arc of three parts overall. So we got something of that sort here. It doesn't look very nice, but it gets the point across. And especially we are looking for this part here. Over here. On the smaller circle, we got six equal parts, at least in a nice sketch, we got six equal parts. Here we got six non-equal parts, but four of those parts are covered, which are part of our length. So what we also got is what we need to do. We need to find the length of this thing right here, this Pac-Man boy, okay, this outside. And this is where the radians come in. Radians are nice to use. They are better than decrease in so many ways. And that's a nice exercise to learn how to make use of radians and, uh, and also corresponding equations. Um, let me introduce you a little, a little bit. It's, it's very easy, but it's fun to do. So what we need here for this first part is just a part of the circumference of this whole circle. Let us at first find out what the whole circumference of this bigger circle is. The formula for the circumference is 2 pi r. We all know this, where r is the radius, but 2r is the same as the diameter. So we can also rewrite this circumference as pi times the diameter, but we know what the diameter is. It's six centimeters. So overall, the circumference of the first circle, the whole circumference, is nothing other than six times pi. And don't forget, this right here is in centimeters in some kind of way. This is important for what I'm gonna introduce next. Namely, this whole circumference corresponds this right here is the correspond symbol to an angle being covered by the circle of 360 degrees or in other words 2 pa. And this is why units are important because the correspondence symbol is not an equivalence relation but it can correlate two different units to one another and then you can solve a little cross multiplication puzzle you could say. And the centimeters are important. If you wouldn't have those, there would be something like six pi is equal to two pi. <laughs> that, that ain't right. <laughs> Maybe mod pi, but not now. So I'm going to take away the centimeters. I hope I got the point across. Now, other than that, we want to find another corresponding equation such that we can cross multiply everything and solve for the unknown. The unknown in our case is part of the circumference. So the thing we are looking for is called x. But what does part of the circumference, so this right here, correspond to? Which angle? Well, 
the whole circumference we notice is corresponding to an angle of 2 pi in radians. But our arc length that we need here is only 3 out of 8 parts of this whole circle. So 3 eighths of 2 pi. Now we can cancel stuff out a tiny bit. 2 divided by 8 is the same as 1 quarter. So 3 quarter pi corresponds to our unknown arc length. And now we can cross multiply and it's very simple. 6 pi times 3 divided by 4 pi. Uh, yeah, 6 pi times 3 divided by 4 pi divided by 2 pi. It's going to be our x. That's just solving a simple equation. Um, yeah. You're probably familiar with this, but I want to introduce it because why not? We are doing stuff always from the crown up um, here on this channel. So yeah, might as well introduce it once again. So 6 pi times 3 quarters pi divided by 2 pi. Now you might notice pi and pi is going to cancel out. The units overall are going to amount to centimeters in some kind of way. Then we have um, 6 divided by 2 is 3. So 3 times 3 over 4 is the same as 9 over 4 and we get pi up here. So 9 divided by 4 pi is our first other length that we need here. Okay, thus far that's good. Now we can go through the same procedure with this one right here. And it's very easy at that. C2 is the same as 2 times pi times the radius. Radius is 2 centimeters, so 4 times pi. And 4 times pi corresponds to 2 pi as the radians. Now we got ourselves a second corresponding equation. We are going to call it x once again. And this corresponds to 2 pi. Don't forget that is corresponding to our whole circumference. And we got 1, 2, 3, 4 out of 6 parts. 4 out of 6. Stuff is going to cancel out this time a little bit. 2 divided by 6 is going to give us 1 third. So 4 thirds pi which is the same thing as here, just turn around, okay, just a reciprocal for the coefficient. And now we can once again multiply those two together and divide both by 2 pi, giving us that our last unknown is equal to 4 pi times 4 divided by 3 pi divided by 2 pi. Pi and pi is going to cancel out and we got 4 and 2 giving us 2 up here, resulting overall in 8 divided by 3 Pa. And once you got the hang of that, radians are easy to manage. The same as the conversion from radians to degrees and even grad gradient. <laughs> Don't know if anyone ever uses those. But yeah, um, you can use the same method here. Cross multiplication is very powerful and very cool if you got something linear going on. And the last thing we can do, so this is something nice, we can just use this. We can also bring those fractions together. So we got um, 8 centimeters plus, um, we got something pi. And now we got 3 times 9 is going to give us 27. The common denominator is 12. 27 plus 4 times 8 is the same as 32, so 59. Pi times 59 divided by 12 plus 8. Um, is something. I don't know. Um, if it's 4 times into here, 4 times pa, it's gonna be around 12. Yeah, I don't know. That's an answer, I suppose. <laughs> you can put it in your calculator and get this value out and then you should be fine. And maybe you got this right here too. And if you did, leave some comments down there below. And this was a fun little problem. It was not hard, but it was indeed fun to do. And if you're interested in more trigonometry, geometry, and all the crazy things that you maybe haven't explored yet in those fields in mathematics, then the contents of today's sponsor print might be the perfect fit for you. Now a great thing about elementary geometry is that you can, for the most part, split up figures like those into different parts and get yourself the individual solutions that you can just smash together once again to get yourself the final solution. And that's a very cool approach to trigonometry, geometry, and so on. And you can't achieve something like this without visualizing the problem at hand first. And this is where Brilliant is very strong at. Brilliant is your source for some of the best online learning content that you can find out there. Doesn't matter if you want to learn something about the mathematics that we did today 
or different kind of mathematics, algebra or calculus. Maybe you want to learn something about physics, general relativity, special relativity, thermodynamics, or maybe you're more of a chemistry guy. It really doesn't matter what you learn, want to learn in the STEM field, Brian definitely got something up their sleeve for you. And their course concept is what makes the site extremely unique. If you want to learn something about um, radius, for example, over on Brian, then you are most certainly going to be introduced to radians by the notion of degrees in some kind of way. A very introductory part of their course is just going to tell you a bunch of things about how to convert degrees to radians and then those courses are going to get gradually harder over time. But this is not a problem in a normal case because all of those problems and things in the courses that you are going to solve are going to be under light with visuals like here and also graphics that you can play around with. And that's the magic of Brilliant. Learning by doing and playing around with those amazing visuals to get yourself a better understanding of the problems at hand. And maybe you are some kind of visual learner, then you are definitely going to profit from their services. And don't take my word for it. Try it out for yourself by using my link at the top of the description, brilliant.org slash maths. With it, you are going to get a 30 day completely free trial over on the website. Try out the whole landscape of Brian for completely free. And if you think this could turn into a long term relationship between you and the website, then definitely make sure to make complete use of the link and get 20% of an annual premium subscription, which is an amazing deal. They are adding so much content on a regular basis and brushing up on the old courses to make them even better than they are at the moment, that it's definitely worth it and you should check it out. And maybe you also know someone that would just love to get themselves a subscription for Brian this Christmas, then it's the perfect time. Get them the subscription and help them keep learning and to broaden their knowledge and horizon of <laughs> knowledge basically. So yeah, it's, it's it's just a great way. I actually gifted out a bunch of subscriptions to students in the past, did a little contest um, in my classroom and they all got a kick out of it. It's a great website and they offer an amazing service of Unprint. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. And this concludes today's video and I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. Don't forget to also check out MP Cooking, my NPC channel and two more days <laughs> up until the advent calendar. And I still have a bunch of other things to do. Um, but yeah, I hope everything is going to turn out nicely. I wish you guys a flamble day and I'm going to see you soon. See ya. <laughs>